we really appreciate all the leadership from Spokane County, surrounding counties, and North Idaho for being here today. We're going to talk a little bit about Senate Bill 6218, which is titled the Police Accountability Act. The act is very simple. No one in this profession has ever stated that lying was okay, so or committing a crime on duty was okay. This bill simply says you shouldn't commit a crime on duty and you shouldn't lie. It's no more than that. You're going to hear a lot of people say that we're trying to do away with uh, collective bargaining or impact uh, arbitration. The arbitrators have a full role in this. Matter of fact, the arbitrators are one of the key determinations if this thing moves over to decertification. The arbitrator has to decide if we follow due process, if we follow just cause, and if we proved our case. If the arbitrator says that we've done all that and sustains that finding, that finding will for be forwarded to CJTC, to the decertification board, and they will have a hearing on this issue. It is so vital to our profession that we have this type of accountability within our, our structure. How did we get here? About six years ago, the state of Washington Supreme Court made a decision that said there's no firmly declared public doctrine that says a police officer has to tell the truth. I totally disagree with the Supreme Court because when I was in the academy, they told us you can't lie. When I was in the field training car, they told us you can't lie. When I was in a field training officer and I taught new rookies, I told them you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make some big mistakes. You'll survive most of those mistakes if you do one thing. Tell the truth. Don't lie. This comes down to the credibility that each and every person that wears a badge has with our public. The public trust is one thing that if we do not have, we can't do this job anymore. This comes down to us being held to the correct standards, which for some is, is shocking that I, ha I even have to say this, but I've actually heard law enforcement officers say we shouldn't be held to higher standards. We should be held to everybody else's standards. That's not true, because the minute you raised your hand and said, I'm going to do this job, I'm going to obey the Constitution of the United States and the state of Washington and the laws thereof and enforce them, you stepped into a different realm. You stepped into a realm where you are held to a higher standard, and we should be, because we deal with people's freedoms, and in certain circumstances, we deal with people's lives. We can take the freedoms. In certain circumstances, we can take a life. And you want to tell me you don't want us held to the highest standards possible? I disagree with anybody that says differently. We are a profession of truth. We are a profession of honor and integrity. And we need to be held to higher standards. I appreciate the chiefs and sheriffs for being here. I'm going to turn over uh, the time for a few of them to speak. Then we'll open up to some questioning. Chief? I'm Gary Jenkins, Pullman Police Chief. Uh, as Chief, I have an obligation and a duty to provide law enforcement services to my community with integrity and to provide a police force that my community can trust. Uh, I, I believe my community and all of our communities have a right to demand that we hold our officers uh, accountable to a higher standard and we need to have the tools to be able to do that. Well, good afternoon. My name is uh, Scott Hogan. I'm the Chief of Police in Post Falls, and I would like to uh, start by thanking the Sheriff and all of the uh, Washington law enforcement leaders for allowing us to be here to stand in support of the Law Enforcement Accountability Act. You know, um, unfortunately, it is not uncommon to see cases where police officers have committed criminal activity. And if there are not sufficient rules in place that allow department heads to re remove these officers from power, it has the potential to compound and tarnish the law enforcement reputation that we all work so hard for. You know, when a law enforcement officer sneezes, all of us in law enforcement catch a cold. And I can't tell you how many times I've been asked from leaders in my community 
about incidents that have happened in other law enforcement jurisdictions. You know, Idaho currently has similar laws on the books to the one we're here to support today that allow the Idaho Peace Officer Standards and Training uh, Commission to decertify officers who are charged with misconduct and illegal activity. And it's worked well to remove several officers uh, from law enforcement that would otherwise still be working in our communities. You know, it's more important than ever that we're holding ourselves accountable. We have a choice to police ourselves or be policed, and the community expects nothing less than that. You know, we have a saying in North Idaho that is used often, and that is the blurring of the patch. You know, if a citizen needs assistance, they don't care which law enforcement officer responds to provide them that assistance. They want the closest officer to respond. But the citizens expect that the officer that does show up is professional and held accountable. You know, the criminals don't care about state lines. And many times our officers are working collaboratively with uh, Washington officers and vice versa. Happens on a weekly basis, we're on both sides of the border. And it's more important than ever that we're all holding ourselves to the same or similar standards. Again, that's what the public expects from us, is to ensure that we're holding ourselves uh, accountable. Again, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Uh, thanks to, uh, to everyone for showing up, and, and I'm proud to uh, stand here in support of this issue. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kendall Allen, Stevens County Sheriff. You know, it seems bizarre to me that we even have to be here having this conversation. I believe that the people that we serve expect law enforcement officers, police officers, to, to, to have that integrity and to be truthful. Uh, it just goes to the very core of what we're all about. Uh, this, uh, this bill that passed would, uh, would do a, a, a great, great boon to the law enforcement agencies of Washington so that we can uh, police our own. Uh, it would give the uh, training commission uh, uh, that extra tool we need to uh, be rid of, uh, of problem officers that are going to give every one of them in law enforcement a, a black eye. I would urge anyone that uh, happens to see this today to uh, contact their, their state representatives, their senator, uh, let them know that you're in favor and you demand truthfulness and uh, the fact that police officers are not out committing crimes while they're on duty. That's just, it's ludicrous. So I would ask anybody who would see this, contact your legislators and let's get, let's get some support behind this. And uh, I believe that's what the, the public demands and what the public deserves. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Ben Wolfinger. I'm the Kootenai County Sheriff. I applaud the chiefs and sheriffs in Washington to raising the bar here uh, on this issue. I've been in law enforcement more than 30 years in Idaho, and we've always had this standard. Uh, I've, I was flabbergasted when I realized that Washington didn't. Integrity is all we have. And I can't believe that uh, the Washington legislature even thinks twice about passing this bill. It, it's a must. We have to keep the level of uh, professionalism and integrity at its highest possible position uh, for all law enforcement. The citizens deserve it and the citizens want it. And even more so, the law enforcement professionals throughout the state of Washington, I really believe they want professionals to work with side by side. Uh, I encourage the Washington uh, voters to contact your legislators and, and get this passed. Uh, it's important for you, it's important for law enforcement, and it's important for the future of Washington. Thank you. Questions? I'll, I'll deal with both sides of that, that question, Jeff. As far as the question uh, about the IAs and people from the rank and file coming to a supervisor and, and stating, you know, this, uh, this deputy or officer is doing something that's outside the bounds, that happens on a great occasion. And that shows you that they do want to have high standards. But they also run the risk of, of being, uh, being, quite frankly, shunned 
in certain uh, instances if they do make that move. And I take great pride in the ones that have the courage to step up and say, you know, this is wrong. And they do it on a great uh, and, and most often time. The other side of that is how did the organized labor feel about this? Last year when we ran this bill, before we, we got into uh, the big discussions about it, I met with Kevin Parker, Representative Kevin Parker, who was the sponsor of the bill last year, um, some other re representatives in the state. We had uh, walk-ups in the room with us uh, discussing this matter, uh, Sheriff uh, Salisbury from Mason County. And the first words out of organized labor's uh, mouth was, Sheriff, you've made us very angry. If you don't back down, we're coming after you. That's that was the reception that we got in that meeting. Uh, we have tried to <coughs> negotiate with uh, organized labor on this. Uh, I really believe that organized labor should be supporting this because it shows that we're willing to police our own. And you know that's what we should be working towards is making sure that we have a higher level and raise that bar. Can you tell us where this bill is right now in the legislative process? Senator Mike Padden from uh, the 4th Legislative District is uh, the sponsor of this. It's in the, his Senate co committee, the Law and Justice Committee, and it has to get out of committee this Friday. That's why this is so important that we get the information out and the citizens contact the representatives. What I w would really appreciate is if there's any way to get this film footage over on the west side of the state where you can actually get some, some traction on, on this because this is a statewide issue. The sheriffs and chiefs of the, of the state of Washington have made this our number one legislative issue. We need to have the, the power and authority to police our own. I've asked that question myself, Mike, and uh, the the question the the answer is, a uh, deferred is looked at as a conviction. What could keep it? I mean, since just about everybody up there at the podium says this is a no-brainer piece of legislation, what could keep it from advancing from its committee status on the full vote of the Senate? To put it bluntly, fear. Fear uh, of retaliation fear of uh, having people uh, not support you in the upcoming election. That's why. Are you talking about different labor groups not supporting candidates with money? That's what they're afraid of, Jeff. That It comes down to just that simple of a statement. It's the Idaho Peace Officer Standards and Training Council, or POST for short. When was this passed in Idaho? Uh, I couldn't tell you when it was passed, but the rules have been there since I've been in law enforcement since the early 80s. So, Sheriff, sure, can you think of any relatively contemporary cases where had this law been in effect that people would have been decommissioned if they lost their hearing? There was a, a case, an arbitration case, that came out of Washougal this year, Jeff. And what that case dealt with is um, a police officer had somebody in the back of their car in handcuffs taking them to jail. The individual was acting up in the back seat. The officer stopped to, uh, to make sure he got him back in his belts and everything else, seat belt. And when the officer was doing that, uh, the individual spit on him. Well, the officer retaliated by punching him twice in the head. The chief had uh, that officer prosecuted. He was found guilty of fourth degree assault. It, the, he was taken to arbitration uh, as far as the, the termination and the, uh, the arbitrator gave his job back to him after being convicted of fourth degree assault. And then you have multiple issue or uh, examples on this side of the state. Sounds stupid. 
Pardon me? He's one of the cases, yes, he is. Yes, that, that happens uh, because there, there are times that as you're negotiating through the, the termination process that you come with, up with uh, negotiated settlements where somebody will leave an agency, uh, as in resign in lieu of termination, and they, they can go out and get another job. Would this still affect that? Yes, it would. Yeah, it would. Any other questions? There was one question that was asked uh, of me out in the hall, <coughs> and that question was about lying, and that uh, you know the individual uh, talked to uh, one of the, the law enforcement uh, deputies or officers in the in the area, and was told, well, you know, lying's so subjective, hard to prove. My question, I guess, my response to that one is this. If it was so subjective, why do we use it in our integrity interviews? We seem to be able to prove if somebody told the, the lie or truth in integrity interviews as you're trying to get into law enforcement. If it's so subjective, why are we allowed to even use it in the courts? Because we testify in court that suspect here lied to us. It's only subjective when, I guess, your job's on the line. But we use telling the truth or determining if somebody's telling the truth to put people in prison, to keep them out of the profession. Why can't we use it to get them out of the profession if they don't want to wear this badge with honor? So that's my response on subjectiveness of lying. We use it all the time. There's no, go ahead. Because it would be, it would be seen as a an admission, uh, a, a sustained finding, and then they, uh, if we have a situation like that, we have to contact CJTC. CJTC will have a hearing. If the uh, if the officer wants to fight the their hearing, then you'd have a full bore hearing, and if he lost that, he'd be decertified. Is that the Actually, it's up to CJTC to take that action because once we terminate them or they leave in lieu of termination, we send CJTC a letter saying this has happened. You see a G CJTC then contacts that, uh, that employee, asks if they want a hearing. If they have a hearing, they go through the hearing, and if they uh, are found to be guilty of that act, then they're decertified. Any other questions? Do you have the support of the Spokane Police Department? That's the, is there a representative here? I don't. Uh, Chief Straub uh, said he was going to try to make it today. <coughs> I think he has another meeting, but as far as I know. Any other questions? If not, thank you for being here. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. This is about our profession, and it's about public trust. Thank you. <laughs>